everybody. Welcome to Mando Lessons Live. We're going to start out with some kind of tune here. Welcome to Mando Lessons Live every, not every, but occasional Saturdays at noon Eastern Standard Time. Looks like we got tons of people in the chat already. Let me uh, zoom in on things here. Actually, I'm going to try something else. Pop out the chat. Let's give that a shot, huh? Just always trying something new here every time. Uh, hope everything's coming through loud and clear for everyone. We got folks from all over the place. We've got Lawrence, the Pelican, Sheldon, Kevin, James, William, Houghton, Johnny, Asia, Lewis, Robert, Ritika, Anthony, Greg, Chip. Good to see all these familiar names and some new ones too. Uh, if you haven't been here before, this is just a general Q&A on mandolin. Uh, so if you got questions about mandolins, music, technique, tunes, anything like that, I'm happy to do my best to help you out in whatever way I can. I'll also play some tunes. I'll take requests if they're ones that I know, but I'll also steer away from the copyrighted stuff. But let me uh, scroll through the chat here a little bit and see what you all are talking about. Love hearing what everybody's been working on. All right, Washington State, Texas, Alabama. Worm Picker says, Gray Eagle. Yes, the first tune that I just played there in the Kia A. Great old time tune that I learned from the playing of Raina Gellert called Gray Eagle. Uh, fiddle players will cross tune A E A E for that one. So I just play it out of standard. Uh, Andrew, thank you so much for the super chat donation. Really appreciate it. Helps make more lessons and keep things like these live streams going. I put out new lessons every week here on YouTube and over at MandoLessons.com and any sort of donation whether it's through Super Chat or there's a couple ways to donate on the site totally optional all my stuff will always be free but it always is appreciated and helps me keep pumping out the lessons Argentina cool uh, Ritika says uh, were you self-taught for the most part yeah um, I started playing, I'm from rural Maine, um, and there weren't a whole lot of mandolin players around, so I kind of looked up stuff on the internet, um, got a few pointers from people along the way, but um, used Mandolin Cafe a lot and YouTube a lot just to kind of see what people were doing, learning from records, things like that. I had a buddy who was learning to play mandolin at the same time, which I think is really helpful. I jumped right into sort of playing with other people, which I think is really um, one of the best things you can do for your playing and just for the amount of fun you can have uh, with the music is really just get out there and start playing with other people it's a lot more fun 
and it's a lot and your uh, skill level will really go up nice and nice and steady let me see this chat just jumped here uh go fish office says we almost got a foot of snow that's awesome not sure where you're at up in maine let me look at the weather here last i looked it was okay we're back down to 18 forecasted for the next oh well eight uh five tonight and 18 tomorrow so i guess that's like 23 and then another inch on monday so we're looking at like two feet of snow uh, i'm gonna go over to a friend's house and purposefully get snowed in over there so we can all hang out and play tunes all all weekend um but so i'm looking forward to that but yeah i hope everybody's staying warm and safe if you're uh in the snowy zone like we are up here in new england cool kevin got a bandolim from portugal for christmas wider neck different tone cool a lot of fun chandra from ohio very cool welcome Oh no, Johnny's arm is in a cast, but he says he's going to learn that tune once it's out. Glad to hear it. Hope you, uh, it's a good time to listen to a lot of music. Whenever I've been unable to play for one reason or another, great time to really just listen hard to a lot of your favorite music. Uh, maybe learn a little bit of music theory, see if you can start uh, recognizing chord changes, things like that. There's plenty of a mental game to do with this music as well, so always something to keep you busy. All right, AC from... County Cork, good to have you. Idaho, Ellen and Rag from Warren Picker. I'll play that in a little bit. It's one of my favorite tunes in all time, of all time. And Light and Hitch album. That's one of my favorite albums of all time. You've got great taste. Chip, thank you so much for the super chat donation. Wow, you guys are going to town on the chat today. I'm loving it. Great to see so much stuff going back and forth. I will do my best to keep up, but no promises. If I keep missing your question, throw it back out there. All right, have dog will travel. Good to see you, Michael from China. Great. Fire on the mountain. I'll play a version of Fire on the Mountain that I just learned recently. Oh, except I always get it mixed up with another one. We'll see how that one goes. Uh, Big Sandy River. I can't remember that one off the top of my head. Have dog will travel. Thank you so much for the very generous super chat donation. Appreciate it very much. Helps me keep doing this sort of stuff, and it's great to see you here most weeks. Puerto Rico, awesome. Welcome. I bet it's warmer down there than it is up here. Uh, Reminisce, I don't know that one. Or a tune called Wheels, I also don't know that one. How you place your left hand. I'm getting a bit of pain in my thumb. I'm sure my fingers are too tense. All right, I'll stop there for now, just because I'm never going to catch up at this rate and play a little bit of Ellen and Rag and talk a little bit about left hand position. I wonder if I can, let me, uh, okay, I'm on, let's see here. <laughs> Still getting used to the, uh, so yeah, it might be, a, I'll get to a more in focus here. Let's see. So what I'm doing with my left hand here, I had to move away from the camera a little bit, but I kind of got this light, uh, I kind of think of it as like opening a door, like grabbing a door handle, like nice and loose and you can just kind of take that shape, lay it around the instrument nice and comfortably. If you look out back, you can see that uh, got a little space back there. Uh, so I'm not I'm not holding it like a baseball bat or anything. I'm trying to get this all in camera. You know, my hand's not straight up on it. A um, little bit of space there, nice and relaxed, nice straight forearm and wrist. Nothing. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. But just nice and straight through the arm that was a kind of a fun angle maybe i'll put up a lesson i did a lesson recently on an alternate angle for your right hand that was a lot of fun and maybe i'll do one for the left hand too because that was a nice little angle that i i hadn't seen before um so yeah nice and relaxed with your left hands really helpful really gonna make things more comfortable play a little bit of uh l and n rag if i can remember how it goes there it is Thank you. 
There's a little bit of L and N rag, a great tune in the key of C. Don't know the origins of that, but I learned it from a great old time album, Light and Hitch, old time string band. Okay, let's see. Chip says working on Prairie Jewel uh, on Nesser. Oh, and Nesser, both by Reichman. Cool. He's got some great tunes. Uh, yeah, he's amazing. Gets a great sound out of his mandolin and an awesome picker. I don't know either of those, but I should look them up. Went to a friend's house last night at a fun jam. Guitar, uke, violin, and me on the mandolin. It was awesome. JN, awesome. That's great to hear. It's good to hear you're getting out and playing lots of music with your buddies. That's what it's all about. Ron says, any tips for beginners? I would say watch my beginner series over at mandolessons.com. There's a whole beginner series. It's also here on YouTube. You subscribe to my channel. And it really just goes through basic technique, gets you playing with your first tune, your first chords, nice strum patterns, really gets you going. And once you're through that and you feel like your technique is feeling all right and you've got some basic skills under your fingers, I'd recommend uh, going to my website and looking at the, you can sort all the fiddle tunes that I teach. I've got hundreds of fiddle tunes um, and melodies that you can learn both by ear. I've got the tads if you need them, but I really think learning by ear is a great way to go. There's also some play along tracks. So I'll play the melody, you play the, uh, the chords or I'll play the chords and you play the melody, things like that. Um, and you can sort them by difficulty level. So you can look at the beginner ones and the intermediate ones the advanced ones in little sections so you can sort of see which ones grab your ears and which ones might be um, like kind of within your experience level at the moment. That said, it's always fun to push yourself and if you hear something that really catches your ear, go for it and give it a shot. Um, it might be hard, but really enjoying that tune is going to help you uh, get that um, really drive to, to learn a new skill. That's what always helps me is when I'm pushing my my own comfort levels <laughs> why did I block the door behind me uh, yeah I'm gonna go with the zombies that's a good answer uh, mostly had to I've usually got that's a pedal steel guitar back there I've been working on uh, and it's usually right down in front of me but I can't use it when it's uh when it's uh, when I'm live streaming so I moved it over there. That's another thing, and in case anybody tries to come through that door, they've got a little bit more to deal with now. Pay to ho. Oh yeah. Can I do a lesson on Gray Eagle? Yeah. I kind of surprised I haven't already. Let me look that up. Make sure I don't already have one. I'm guessing I don't. Uh, if you're requesting it. Yep, yeah, no lesson for Grey Eagle. Uh, I will add that to my list, because that's definitely a tune that should get out there. Uh, request for Pay to Ho. I will definitely play that tune, one of my favorites. Is that a pedal steel in the back? Yes, it is. Uh, it's in E9, so it's just a single neck E9. A lot of fun. One of the craziest instruments I've ever tried to learn how to play. Takes the whole, both feet... Knees hitting levers, left hand's got a slide, right hand's got finger picks. There's a lot going on, but it's super fun. I've just been playing along with a lot of slow country recordings. Uh, Johnny says he's got a mandolin that he says it's great for starting, but lacking in volume. You think that's because it's... Uh, it's, it's oh semi-acoustic okay i see um yeah that definitely um you know if it's not like a full carved instrument and it's got like larger chunks of wood in it to be uh semi-acoustic that's gonna make the instrument a little quieter for sure i've had those in the past and they weren't always the loudest instruments in the world but at the same time you can always plug in um, but in terms of, you know, if you ever go straight acoustic with your next mandolin or something like that, you're, the, the volume will get, will get louder. Oops. Uh, wow, you guys are 
keeping me busy on the chat. Uh, any thoughts on a first mandolin? Looking at Eastman. Eastman's a great way to go. I'm not sponsored by any mandolin companies. I do have some uh, referral links in the description. So if you click on stuff and buy stuff through Amazon, maybe I'll get a percentage at no cost to you. Just put that out there. But no, no, uh, no affiliation with any companies at this point. Um, I really like the Kentucky mandolins, the KM150. Um, it's a great mandolin. Buy it from a website like Elderly or the mandolin store that's going to do a great setup job. I've got one right off screen over there. I love it. Um, but there's a, you can get a lot, of, a lot of mandolin for a couple hundred bucks these days. Uh, also, check out the used market, uh, Craigslist, um, the Mandolin Cafe Classifieds, all good options. Oh, cool. Worm Pickers got a friend in Light and Hitch. Awesome. Hey, Yellow Rose Farm, good to see you. Oh, nice. Lewis is a retired former LNN locomotive engineer. Louisville and Nashville Line. Cool. That's a, a good thing to know. Advise on transposing to different keys, I assume. Uh, I've learned some tunes on uke in C, which I play in D on the mandolin. Any easy way to transpose? Uh, well, if you're trying to go up from like C to D and you want to play your C tune in D on a uke, you can always put a capo on. Um, but in terms of like playing up the neck, I think one of the biggest things is just get those first couple notes. So, you know, if you're playing, um, whatever that, uh, pay to ho, which I'll play in a second here. The first line, that's in the key of D. If you know the tune in one key, and then you're saying, okay, I want to play it in a different key. So you'll, you'll find those first couple notes. Like if I want to play it in A, rather than that ends on a D, so I need a little line that ends on an A. Okay, there it is. And from there, that often will let the tune fall into place. So getting those first couple notes is often the hardest and figuring out how to sort of situate the tune in the new key. And then everything else falls into place. So that's a D tune, I'll play it in the key of D. This is pay to ho. too many buttons these days keeps going back and forth sorry for the jumpy cuts there still getting used to the old foot switch um all right yeah so there's a little pay to ho one of my favorite tunes it's on the website if you want to learn it highly recommended yep robert's got an eastman set up from elderly very good uh that's gonna be a great mandolin oh cool good to see you denise on a friend's computer and going to elderly for a workshop that's super fun. Wish I lived closer to elderly, except then I would have too many instruments. I already have too many instruments, but I would have even more if I was within striking distance of elderly. Did you ever get a chance to look at Yarmouth Reel? Thank you, JN. I still have not had a chance to look at Yarmouth Reel. I'm really fighting to stay afloat on the stuff. I'm uh, still trying to like kind of catch up and make a backlog of lessons and all that 
keeping up with the website stuff, so I still have not checked out the Yarmouth reel, but uh, keep keep requesting it, and one of these days I will get to it. Kathy says, I usually have a fiddle lesson during your lessons, but it was canceled due to the snowstorm in Iowa. Great, glad you're here. Glad you can make it. Cool, Ronan. Glad you're here. Glad you love the mandolin. Be it on the piano or the mandolin, I love fast, happy music. Any song suggestions for mandolin that is played at faster speeds from Go Fish Office? I would recommend going to my website and checking out um, the... I mean, I, most of the tunes on my website are like major uh, dance tunes that are about... You know, you can check out that Pay to Ho. Uh, a lot of the New England tunes are very happy. Uh, Irish tunes, jigs, reels. My website is just kind of, as far as I'm, I mean, happy is kind of a subjective term, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, most of the music on my website is pretty upbeat and happy. I like happy tunes best as well. Um, so yeah, just scroll around on the website. You can listen to the tune by clicking on the uh, play along tracks and you'll get a sense of what it sounds like. And if it catches your ear, get in there and learn it. Yeah, the Crooked B part on LNN is awesome. It's got the greatest chord progression, too. Uh, when you pick fiddle tunes, do you play both of each string or just one from Ritika? And apologies if I'm saying your name incorrectly. Uh, I pretty much approach the mandolin as if it was a four-string instrument. I don't really think about there being two separate strings. Um, so I just go through them all. Maybe sometimes I hit one, maybe sometimes I hit two. Uh, I don't really think about it too much and really just imagine it as a four-string instrument, and that works for me. Other people might other have like different ways of thinking about it, but that's the way I've always approached it, just not not thinking about it too much. Uh, but great question. I get that question a lot, and I've never quite figured out the best way to kind of answer it. Because all I, I don't like the answer, like, I don't think about it, but that's the only way I've ever approached it, so... I don't know. Sheldon says, sometimes I need to use a capo and I found it gets in the way of making a D chord. Any advice on the best capo to use? Um, yeah, hang on for a second. I don't know if this capo is in here. It's around somewhere. I recently found this. I I used a bunch of different capos over the years. Let's see. So I've got a pile of capos. Uh, maybe I can make a lesson on different capos. Um, kind of this. I don't know what the name of any of these. Maybe this is like a page capo. I can't remember what any of these are called. Uh, kind of that shape. Um, the classic Kaiser. Um. And then I found this one. I think I found it somewhere. It says Diderio on it, um, but it's very small. It's very kind of low profile. Um, and it's the kind of most low profile capo I've seen. Uh, in, in general, let me uh, switch to the different screen here. Um, in general, with capos, I recommend, you know, kind of putting it closer to this, fr the leading fret. So if you're going to go to like the second fret, don't put it here, like way back behind. You can bring it kind of closer up to the front of the fret. It's going to make the instrument stay in tune a little bit better. That said, if you get too close, it can start kind of getting in the way. And when I do make that D chord, I definitely, my hand's kind of wrapping around that capo a little bit. But because this capo so low profile it doesn't get in the way in the same way that other ones do um and so if it's really getting in the way i might back it off just a little bit and that's a one option is just trying to find a nice low profile capo um all right Hope that's helpful. Pig ankle rag lesson. 
yeah, I did that one a while ago. It's a super fun tune. Something like that. I can't quite remember. Oh, I've got the capo on still. Uh, apologies if you're trying to play along. How to hold the pick uh, and use it to make more volume when you're picking pretty fast. I've got, um, yeah, I'll go through that. It's also in my beginner series on my website. But kind of the way that I approach it, like I was saying with the left hand, um, if you kind of imagine yourself grabbing a door handle, you know, you've got this kind of loose fist shape. And I'm really just going to take the pick and kind of hold on to the point of the pick with my left hand and drop it into my right. So it looks like that. Um, get it over something. And it sticks out a little. You can, uh, play around with how much it sticks out. You know, you can have it stick out quite a bit or you can really choke up on it, have it stick out less. And then in terms of, let me get back to the other... Uh, In terms of like right hand angle, again, this is all in the beginner series. You, if your right hand is sort of parallel to the floor and you tip the instrument a little bit in your left hand, you get this pick to kind of angle through the strings. And that really helps uh, this pick roll over the strings. A little less pick noise, a little more kind of rounder sound, a little more fluid sound versus a little more choppy um hope that's helpful chip says how about homage on Ed edmund perizo great tune with fun cross picking i love that tune i can never start it i can't i can never remember how it goes and i i know i can play it when people really get going into it but i can never remember how that one starts but it's a great tune highly recommend checking it out if you haven't yep you could also try uh robert says so the Pelican 3, um, try using a thinner, stiffer pick. Yeah, try different pick materials, thicknesses, shapes, things like that can also adjust the sound of the instrument. Oh, it jumped on me. Let's see. King of the Pipers. I don't know that tune off the top of my head. <laughs> Cool. Worm Picker's got the details on L and N. It comes from Alex Hood and his Railroad Boys. Cool. I'll have to look that up. I'm always looking for source recordings. Awesome. Leslie from Malmo in Sweden. Ever played Hunt the Squirrel? Great tune. Great English tune. I'll play a little bit of that. Um... There it is. A little bit of Hunt the Squirrel. I actually have an album called Hunt the Squirrel. If you go to my website, mandolessons.com, and you look at the, I think it's the shop page, my band Velocipede, which is me playing mandolin and tenor guitar, um, and my bandmate Julia plays fiddle and foot percussion. 
and some other stuff on the album. But we actually have an album called Hunt the Squirrel because we love that tune so much. Great one. Uh, Jan says, ever heard of Banjo Ben Clark? Yeah, he, he does a lot of stuff. That's um, He does tons of different instruments. Definitely more along like kind of the bluegrass world than uh, a more kind of fiddle tune world. But it seems like he's pumping out a lot of stuff. Don't keep up with everything that he does, but it seems like he's got a great resource out there that people really enjoy. Recovering bassist, great question. Going for the deep stuff. What are your goals as a musician and on the mandolin at this point? Great question. I think as like a general musician, um, I'm excited about the pedal steel. Uh, kind of getting comfortable with that, getting so I can play in tune and really getting my right hand under control. Um, oh, I really, uh, I've been listening to this guy Blaze Foley, a great um, kind of country singer, Towns Van Zant contemporary because youtube decided to show me one of his videos a video of him uh a couple like a month or so ago and i just love his guitar picking he's got a kind of a travis style guitar picking that i really want to get that finger picking style into my fingers and learn some of his songs um check him out if you haven't already and in terms of mandolin um i think i'm that's a good question I think I'm always sort of trying to find the right balance between like too many double stops or too much uh, kind of like melodic variation and really kind of sticking right to the melody and single note picking. I'm just trying to, I think it goes everywhere. Like I always want to learn more tunes, uh, which I do to some extent, but I also really want to kind of develop particular styles for particular genres and i think i've been mostly into old time at this point and really kind of differentiating my old time playing from my bluegrass playing because sometimes i mean there is some crossover but i think as a mandolinist sort of trying to really hone in on my old time style versus the bluegrass style something i've been thinking about a lot recently always working on um you know technique staying nice and relaxed I played a contra dance the other. I don't often play contra dances on the mandolin. I'm usually playing guitar, but I played mandolin the other day, and it reminded me like, oh yeah, playing for two or three hours at 120 beats per minute, I get kind of tired, which means my my technique means I'm tensing up a little more than I need to. Always going back to the technique is something I'm always working towards. But yeah, kind of, I'm really scattered. I love learning to play new instruments. I've got a button accordion I want to learn how to play more of banjo six string guitar tenor guitar got this nice little pump organ in the corner but i don't play really i have very limited piano skills um pedal steel lots of too many instruments too little time is what i always say francois says will you show us your cam 150 i do not remember seeing it before would also like to see it oh would like to hear it also yeah Okay, uh, it's probably not very in tune. I actually did a couple lessons with it. I did one lesson. There's a period when my Ellis was in the shop and I just, uh, yeah, that's not so bad. Um, Ellis was in the shop, so I just played this thing. Um, and it totally works. Um, uh, the strings are very old. Close enough for a little demo. So yeah, KM150. I think I got this off Craigslist for like maybe $200, maybe a little less. Can't remember. Um, I did my own little speed neck to the back of the neck um, to kind of make it a little more slippery. I found the finish to be a little sticky. You can find tutorials and people can tell you how to do that over at Mandolin Cafe. Um, makes sliding around a little easier. But uh, yeah, here's the Kentucky. I'll zoom in a little for you. Yeah, close enough. Um, let's see, what tune should I play here? Um, see if Devil's Dream. I've got a request for Devil's Dream. I'll play a little Devil's Dream.
not super in tune, but uh... of the Kentucky again very old strings didn't spend too much time getting it in tune but a lot of fun uh, great great beginner mandolin I wish I had that thing when I started out my first mandolin was nothing like that and I wish it was chill archer says I'm working on a 20 inch scale length octave mandolin and don't know whether the fingerboard should be radius or not that's a good question. I would ask over in the in the uh, builders section of Mandolin Cafe. I know less about radius octave instrument fretboards. I think they probably radius them a little bit, at least most people. But that's a good question. Uh, yeah, I'd say field that question on Mandolin Cafe. Michael, thank you so much for the super chat donation. Uh, helps me for those of you who just arrived or haven't been here since the last donation. Always appreciate it. Helps me do these live streams every week at noon, or most weeks uh, at noon on Saturdays. There's a couple ways to donate at the website. That said, everything will always be free, so it's purely only if you want to. Fire on the Mountain. Uh, that's the other one I can never remember. Uh, that's the one I was thinking about that earlier. I think maybe the Pelican requested that. And I can't remember it off the top of my head, but uh, if I hit a little lull, I can look it up here and maybe get it going. How often do you rely on sight reading music if playing a new song with the group? Vice Oh, versus just looking uh just learning by ear. Uh at least in the kind of music I'm surrounded by, it's ninety nine percent just by ear. Uh people teach tunes by ear around here, learn tunes by ear. I teach at camps where it's all about ear training and learning tunes by ear. Um, I can read sight mu uh, read sheet music. I'm not a super fast sight reader, but uh, I can do it. I, I did a lot more in college when I was uh, learning to play jazz, and I got more uh, proficient at it there, but I haven't played much jazz or read a whole lot of music since then, uh, so those skills have kind of tarnished a little bit. But um, it's a great skill to have. Highly recommend learning how to, you know, I I'd say for... The kind of music that I play, the uh, in terms of like order of importance, I think learning by ear is by far, like far and away, the most important way to learn music. Number two would be standard notation, reading the dots. Number three would be tablature. Um, just because mandolin tablature is specific to the mandolin, and if you're a flute player, tablature doesn't do you any good. And uh, if you end up playing multiple instruments and you learn standard notation, it's going to make so much more sense. And it's a little more um, accessible of, of music for random people um, who might not be playing mandolin. Do I ever teach classical mandolin? I don't. No, I'm pretty much a one-trick <laughs> pony with the, uh, the fiddle tune world. Halfway Pond Waltz by Jim Childress. Or, okay, yeah, so Childress. Um, I know Road to Malvern, great tune. Um, I don't know Halfway Pond Waltz, I'll have to look that one up. New to mandolin from guitar, is there any reason I shouldn't use a guitar pick? Nope, guitar picks are fine. I'm always going back and forth but I got all kinds of different picks some of them are just guitar picks totally um I, I kind of prefer these big thick triangles on mandolin but lots of people just use regular old guitar picks I think it's a great investment of a couple bucks five bucks to just get a bunch of different shapes and sizes and materials of picks and see what you like And you might find something you like on guitar just from the experimentation. 
Okay, uh, what is the spelling for the capo? Uh, it says Daddario. Let's see if I can get that in. So it's like the string company. Oh, it's gonna be too far away to read. Um, see if I can find. I'll see if I can find it online here real quick. So okay, so it's the Planet Waves. NS banjo mandolin capo. So like uh I'll type that so it'll be a little easier. Where is my chat going to? Uh Planet Waves, which is a the Dario company. NS banjo mandolin capo. Again, no uh no sponsorship or anything. Again, I think I found that one on the ground somewhere. Um, all right, let's see. <laughs> Fancy footwork on the camera control. Yeah, I wish it was working. It's for some reason it's like jittering every time I hit it. So I've been, it's not working quite as well as I'd like. But uh, yeah, always something to work on. Big Sandy River, a lesson for Big Sandy River. Yeah, I'll look into that one. It might be copyrighted. I can't remember. Um, Lesson on Hunt the Squirrel, definitely. That's, that's an old English tune. Add that one to the list. When I tune with a Fishman clamp on tuner, open strings, it appears spot on. When I play on the fifth fret, any of the strings, the instrument is horribly out of tune. Can I fix that? Probably yes. Um, so I've got a lesson on my website about like setting up your mandolin. And ultimately, if you're playing, like, if you play an open string, and then you play the fifth fret uh, so you play and then you hit fifth fret and it sounds like uh, that was a bad example um, but if you hit a fret and it's out of tune it means your bridge is not in the right place um, and if you have a floating bridge like this uh, you can loosen all the strings and if the let's see how does this work if the note comes out sharp So if you've got your tuner and you tune your open Ds and they're in tune and then you hit your fifth, fifth fret and your G is sharp, you need to move the bridge towards the tailpiece just a little bit, you know, move it a little bit at a time, tune it, it's kind of a process, but tune it back up, see if it's more in tune, see if you need to go, and if it's, but if you hit the, if your Ds are in tune and you hit your G and it's flat, you got to move the bridge towards the headstock. Work nice and slow and you can totally do that yourself. Uh, if you, if I should wander back tonight, that's a good question. Uh, I don't know if that one's copyrighted or not. I'm so confused about that, like the bluegrass repertoire. Um, a lot of them are like folk songs, but a lot of them are copyrighted. Uh, maybe I'll play a little instrumental version. Uh, along the same lines as the string question, when you pick, do you have a method of when you pick down and when you pick up when you're playing tunes? I do. It is a very specific method. I won't go into it now because it's kind of a long spiel, but um, go to my website in the technique and fundamental section uh, under the right hand technique heading. There's a right hand technique for jigs and right hand technique for reels. So if you're playing in 6 8, the general pick direction is down, up, down, 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 down. Etc. So it's down, up, down, down, up, down, kind of little sets of three. Down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down. And if you're playing reels, it's just down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And but go watch those lessons. Those will set you straight on pick direction. And that is one of the biggest things you can do to really solidify the time feel and your kind of groove on the mandolin is really getting your your pick direction in order it, it, it really adds a lot one of the most important things i think i ever did was kind of spend a summer and just re i had crazy no particular pick technique whatsoever and uh one summer i just was like okay i'm gonna figure this out once and for all and i slowed way down and got my right hand in order hugely helpful for me 
Earl is from Trinidad. Can I play a Parang song? Like Alegria. Unfortunately, I don't know anything about that music. I'll look it up and uh, listen to it. I love listening to music from all over the world. Um, but I really only play kind of fiddle tune repertoire from uh, Ireland and Canada and the States and Sweden. But that said, if it's a cool... If it's something that I can adopt to the mandolin, maybe I'll learn some. I've, I haven't heard of that style of music, but I'll, I'll look it up after the live stream. When's the next Office Hours from JN? That's a good question. So uh, what I do, thanks for the plug, uh, I have a Patreon page. Uh, it's patreon.com front slash mando lessons. Um, and I'm just going to pull up my calendar here so I can answer this question. And we do a, so for people who support me with a small donation of $5 or more a month, uh, I do a a um, sort of a more private version of this where I really get to dive into questions a little more um, a little more um, in depth and kind of answer things rather than trying to keep up with the chat. There's a lot less people, and I can really spend more individual attention with people, which I love to do. Um, so if you're interested in that, check out you can check out the donate button on my website, and then. Or just go to patreon.com for slash mando lessons. There's a link in the description. And next, I think it depends on how the weather goes. Um, because we're getting a big I was gonna do it this oops, sorry, hitting the mic. I was gonna do it this Monday and set it up like earlier this week, but now it seems like the weather's gonna be kind of wild. Um and I've got something the following Monday. So it might end up I might do like a pre um pre-public live stream next saturday i'll definitely let you know when it comes out on patreon again apologies that i've over the last couple months i haven't given a whole lot of heads up on these because it's been, i've been traveling and trying to catch up with everything else in life so it's been a little behind but i'll give you as much heads up as i can on the patreon private stream <clears throat> kevin just got a mountain dulcimer very cool yeah those are a lot of fun uh a uh, friend that I teach with at Maine Fiddle Camp is an awesome dulcimer player, and I love hearing her play it. Uh, Pam Weeks is her name. Um, and she's got some great dulcimer chops. Yeah, trying to... Uh, Recovering Basis says, trying to figure out how to give each instrument I own proper amounts of time and attention. It's like spinning plates to me, totally. Do I sing from Francois? I do, a little bit. Not on stage for the most part but occasionally um i i've never i've never like really done a whole lot of practicing of singing it's one of my goals um is to really like get more comfortable with singing because i feel like i can do it sometimes but i'm a little inconsistent i don't always feel great about my own singing but it's always something to work on um and occasionally i'll i'll throw out a song or two Okay, let's see. Oh, nice. Sean is on a GDAD trip on my octave mandolin playing Irish Tread. That's what I play all my octave instruments with, like tenor guitar and octave mandolin, bazooki sort of stuff. Any more uh, tips on accompaniment for GDAD? Because I swap occasionally. Um, check out tenorguitarlessons.com. I can't remember if I've told you this site before. I've got a, like a beginner series on the GDAD tuning. There's also a book that I haven't looked at myself, but I've heard good things by the late, great John McGann called, I think it's, if you look up like Octave Mandolin and Bazooki book, I'm sure you'll find it. It's by John McGann. Um, I've heard a lot of good things about that, but I haven't looked through it much myself. Will the circle be unbroken with some singing? Sure. Um, this is a song that the Carter family version is copyrighted. But um, the original by, I can't remember her name, somebody Havisham, uh, is in the public domain. So I'll be singing maybe not the words that you know. Um, but if you're looking for the Carter family words, you can find them on Google. Oh, let's see, key of G.
set of lyrics i i had to look up the song and see that it was in the public domain from an earlier source in the carter family really nice nice words in that one a little bit different um but a lot of fun a little stuffed up so i'm not i feel like i'm not sounding my best but there you have it uh got uh kevin got a present for a uh, mandolin present for oh or a dulcimer oh yeah dulcimer cool there's a nice little dulcimer chat going on in an old-time jam, what's your philosophy on the role of the mandolin, especially if there's also a good guitar player playing? In general, I play melody in an old-time jam. Occasionally, I'll like add just a little bit of like two-string. Like often, if I'm gonna play chords, I'll try to imitate the sound of like a, a banjo uke. You know, a really kind of simplified chord, sort of this kind of stuff. Very rhythmic, not many strings. I mean, I'm not doing, not doing that. Just like one or two strings, but a little bit more intense right hand rhythm than like the bluegrass chop, which is the offbeat. I'm really kind of got this. I call it the wooga chucka kind of train sound. So I'll do that occasionally, but for the most part, I'll play. Melody with double stops in an old time jam. The nice thing about old time jams is, you know, the tunes are often a little more simplified than Irish melodies. They're a little more singable, a little easier to pick up, and they get played a bunch of times versus at an Irish session you might hear the tune only three times and then it's on to the next tune in the set. With old time music, for the most part, it's, you know, ten, ten or more times through and no sets, just single tunes. the chat i gotta keep an eye on the time here oh wow it's almost one o'clock time flies when you're having fun all right i'm gonna try to scream through some of these last chat things i think uh somebody correct me if i'm wrong but i think we forgot to pick a tune last week to play uh if that's the case and we didn't pick one put out some suggestions for this week and i'll pick one for next week and i kind of also ran out of time this week but if we did have a um tune to play along together this week I'm happy to do it, um, but I'll, let me just see if there's any last-minute things. Apologies if I didn't get to your uh, your question this week. You guys kept me busy on the chat, which I love. Um, Bill Cheeto in the key of A. If I have time, I'll do that. Thank you, Matthew, and recovering bassist and data birds for the super chat donations. Really appreciate it. Um, those really helped me keep this channel and this project chuck uh, chugging along so very grateful do you ever perform for historical reenactments with your old time fiddle learning those sounds like a lot of fun uh, i don't play fiddle but i do play old time music i've i've only played like one renaissance fair is probably the closest i've gotten to a historical reenactment but uh fun stuff all around have you ever considered bringing your band with you for a lesson for one of these live sessions? I have. I've thought about getting a friend in here and just having a fun time. Maybe I'll do that at some point. Thanks for the kind words on the voice, JN. Uh, 
Ooh, Worm Picker says a lot of old tunes just came out of copyright about a week ago. Uh, tell me more. Uh, shoot me an email to mandolessons at mandolessons.com and I, I want to know more about that because I'm always interested to see what I'm now allowed to do because it can be so restrictive uh, with with old folk songs if they're not actually copyright free and in the public domain. So if there's more of that stuff I can put up, I'll do it. But it's, it's a small pool at this point, um, at least for like some of the more popular stuff. Yeah, I was doing some kind of chop chord. Will the circle be unbroken? By and by, by and by. It's kind of this sort of thing. Make it better. Home awaiting. In the sky, in the sky. Oh, red haired boy. Cool. Let's do a little. Oh, wait. Is that a request or. Okay, red-haired boy was picked. Thank you. Um, let's do a little red-haired boy play along. The way this works, get your mandolin out, get it tuned up. We're going to do a version of red-haired boy. We'll start out, I'll play the melody, you play the chords. Then we'll swap back and forth, so I'll play chords while you play the melody. doesn't matter where you're at with this tune, whether you're trying to pick out a couple notes. There's a lesson on my website. If you don't uh, know it already, you can always watch these videos. They're always archived, and you can find them um, after the fact as well. Um, and yeah, so we'll play it through a couple times, swapping back chords, melody. If you know the tune really well, try to add some double stops or some ornamentation to it, and uh, we'll see. Uh, it's always a lot of fun. And while I'm at it, let's pick one for next week. I think I can do next week. Let me look at my calendar again. Oh, yeah, I'll be here next week. Um, let's see, we've got Old French, that's a great suggestion. Jig of Slurs. Rose in the Heather. Ooh, lots of good choices. Um, Ricketts, Out in the Ocean. I see two things for Old French. Let's do Old French next week. That's a great New England tune. I would love it if more people played that tune because it's one of the best tunes there is, in my opinion. Best contra dance tune of all time. <laughs> Don't know about that, but it's good. Um, so Old French next week, but right now... Let's play Red Haired Boy. Kia A, I will uh, zoom in to my other camera here. So I play it too fast. Um, and if you want to do it slower or faster, you can always come back to this point later on and uh, adjust the speed with the little gear icon in the corner. So here we go, uh, Red Haired Boy. It sounds like this. So let's do it about there, one. Two, three, you play the chords. play melody.
play melody. See if you can add some double stops. Or some improv. be a standalone lesson of that as well if you want to do that in a slightly different manner there might be a lesson if not there will be soon because i'll make more of those little play along standalone lessons it's a little easier to find that way um let me see out in the ocean so yeah next week we'll do old french because it's such a great tune Okay, yeah, uh, people click the thumbs up to help me out. I appreciate it. Thanks, Greg, for the, the pointer there. I never really know what those thum thumbs up do, but uh, uh, yeah, it probably doesn't hurt anyway. Uh, have a, So yeah, that's all for this time. See you next week. Um, I'll be in touch about the Patreon private one of these, and thank you all for joining in. Have a great weekend. Stay warm and plowed out if you're gonna get a bunch of snow and see you next time make sure i didn't miss anything last in the all right wandering 128 thanks for showing up for the first time hope to see you back again soon have a great weekend happy picking Bye bye